In Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18, we come across one of the most alarming and vivid prophecies about the future. The Bible speaks of a time when a powerful figure, the Antichrist, will rise to global prominence. This figure, empowered by Satan, empowered by the very gates of hell, will establish a worldwide system that requires allegiance in the form of a mark, the infamous Mark of the Beast. This mark will be mandatory for all people, regardless of their social status, economic standing, or freedom. Revelation states, Revelation 13, verses 16 to 18, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. If you look at our world today, does it not feel like we are being thrust into this age of the mark of the beast? If you ask me, it does. It really does. We are witnessing our world transform right in front of us, a world where everything you say is tracked, everywhere you go is tracked where everything you buy is monitored. It is slowly but surely becoming easier and easier to imagine how the system seen in Revelation could be enforced. We live in a time of unprecedented surveillance, where governments and corporations have the ability to monitor our every move. From the smartphones in our pockets to the social media platforms we use, there is a digital footprint for nearly every aspect of our lives. Facial recognition, biometric data, and cashless transactions are becoming the norm. While these technologies offer convenience and security, they also pave the way for a future where control could be centralized in the hands of a few, just as Revelation warns us about. Think about it. Cash is being phased out, digital currencies are on the rise, and even the concept of a social credit system is being experimented with in some parts of the world. It's not hard to envision a day when buying and selling could be entirely dependent on whether or not someone has pledged allegiance to the system. We are not yet in the time of the Antichrist, but the infrastructure is undeniably being laid out. The world is being conditioned for this. We are moving closer to a society where global control is not only possible, but probable. This mark will signify more than just a means of participating in economic transactions, it represents an allegiance, a loyalty to the Antichrist. Refusing the mark means refusing to bow to this satanic system, and that decision will come with severe consequences. The question is, if you refuse to take the mark of the beast, what happens next? What trials will you face? And how does the rapture fit into this larger context? The Rapture – Timing and Perspectives one of the first things we need to consider in relation to the mark of the beast and the end times is the timing of the rapture. The rapture is the event where believers are taken up to meet Christ in the air, as described in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 to 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. The timing of the rapture has been one of the most hotly debated topics in Christian eschatology. There are three primary views. Pre-tribulation rapture. The belief that believers will be taken up before the tribulation begins sparing them from the trials that will befall the earth. Mid-tribulation rapture. The belief that the rapture will occur midway through the tribulation, after the first three and a half years of relative peace, but before the worst judgments begin. Post-tribulation rapture. The belief that believers will endure the entire tribulation and be raptured at the end, just before the return of Christ to establish his millennial kingdom. Personally, I ascribe to a pre-tribulation view, which teaches that the church will be raptured before the Antichrist rises to power and before the mark of the beast is enforced. However, 
It's important to understand that there are also valid biblical arguments for mid-tribulation and post-tribulation rapture views. The truth is, we must approach prophecy with great humility. Even though I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, I also acknowledge a mid-tribulation rapture and post-tribulation rapture perspective have their own valid strengths. I also acknowledge that there is much we don't know. Jesus himself said in Matthew 24 verse 36, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. No matter how much we study the Bible, no prophecy expert can claim with 100% certainty that they know exactly how and when these events will unfold. The timing of the rapture is in God's hands. Whether the church is taken before, during, or after the tribulation, we can trust that God's plan is perfect and His timing is always right. It's vital to emphasize that our salvation does not depend on whether we believe in a pre-, mid-, or post-tribulation rapture. Over the years, I have seen some Christians act as though a person's view on the timing of the rapture determines their faithfulness to God. This is not only incorrect, but it also shows a lack of understanding of the gospel. We are not saved because we believe in the rapture or because we understand all the details of the end times. We are saved through faith in Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 reminds us, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Consider the thief on the cross. He had no deep knowledge of prophecy or eschatology. In fact, he probably didn't know anything about the rapture at all. Yet, when he asked Jesus to remember him, Christ assured him of a place in paradise. Whether you are a seasoned theologian or a new believer, your salvation is based on your faith in Jesus, not your view of the rapture or end-time events. This is why it's so important for us to approach the topic of the rapture with humility. While it's good to study and discuss these things, we must never let our disagreements on the timing of the rapture divide us or cause us to question someone's faith. We are united by our faith in Christ, not by our eschatological views. For those who find themselves living during the tribulation, whether because the rapture hasn't occurred yet, or because they became believers after the rapture, the refusal to take the mark of the beast will come with severe persecution and hardship. Revelation 13 verse 17 warns that without the mark, people will not be able to buy or sell. This means that those who refuse the mark will be cut off from the world's economic system. They won't be able to access food, water, shelter, or healthcare. The persecution will come from all levels of society. Governments will enforce the mark, making it illegal to live without it. Local authorities will likely aid in this enforcement, ensuring that those who refuse the mark are unable to participate in daily life. It is believable that employers will fire employees who don't have the mark, and even family members and friends may turn on those who remain faithful to Christ. Imagine the pressure that believers will face. Picture a father watching his children grow weaker from hunger because he cannot provide food for them. He knows that all he has to do is take the mark, and they will be able to eat. The temptation will be overwhelming. The devil knows that humans are naturally inclined to protect their families, and he will use this as a weapon of coercion. This is exactly how Satan operates. From the Garden of Eden, where he tempted Eve by questioning God's goodness, to the end times, where he will tempt people to take the mark of the beast, Satan's strategy has always been the same, using deceit, coercion, and manipulation to lead people away from God. Many people will break under this pressure. The persecution will be like nothing the world has ever seen, and many will choose to take the mark simply to survive. Jesus warned us of this in Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The suffering will be so intense that Jesus himself said it would need to be shortened for the sake of the elect. 
Yet, in the midst of this intense persecution, there will be those who endure. These are the saints who remain faithful to Christ, even when it costs them everything. The Bible repeatedly emphasizes the importance of endurance during the tribulation. Revelation 14.12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. This patience, or endurance, will be essential for believers living in the tribulation. The suffering will be immense, but those who endure to the end will be saved. Jesus also said in Matthew 24, 13, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Endurance during the tribulation is not just about surviving physically, it's about remaining faithful to Christ, even when the world around you seems to be crumbling, even when it seems like the Antichrist is in control and evil is winning, believers must hold fast to the truth that God is still sovereign. As we've already discussed, Satan will use coercion to get people to take the mark of the beast. He will exploit people's natural instincts for survival and protection, making it seem like taking the mark is the only reasonable choice. But we know that Satan is a deceiver, and taking the mark comes with a cost, eternal separation from God. As Jesus said in Mark 8 verse 36, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? In the end, taking the mark of the beast may provide temporary relief, but it will lead to eternal destruction. Those who refuse the mark may suffer greatly in this life, but they will gain eternal life in the next. Even during the darkest days of the tribulation, when it seems like evil is triumphing, God is still in control. The Bible makes it clear that nothing is happening outside of His sovereign will. He has foreseen these events from the beginning of time, and His plan is unfolding exactly as He intends. Isaiah 46, 10 says, Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Even when the Antichrist is ruling and the world is bowing to him, believers can take comfort in the fact that God's ultimate victory is assured. In Revelation 19, verse 11 to 16, we read about the return of Christ, who will defeat the Antichrist and establish his kingdom. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. For those who refuse the mark of the beast, there is a glorious promise of eternal life with the Lord. Revelation 24 speaks of those who did not worship the beast or receive his mark, saying, They lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The suffering of this world is temporary, but the reward for faithfulness is eternal. Revelation 21.4 gives us this beautiful promise. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. The decision to refuse the mark of the beast will be one of the most difficult choices a believer can make. The pressure will be immense and the suffering will be great. But whether the rapture happens before, during or after the tribulation, the truth remains. God is in control. He has promised eternal life to those who endure and His promises are sure. Even in the darkest times, we can have hope. If you find yourself in that period, remember this. God is faithful and your refusal to take the mark of the beast is a declaration of your allegiance to the one true King, Jesus Christ. The suffering of this world is temporary, but the joy of eternity with Him is forever.